Hey cadets, Captain Crypto here, and welcome to Kryptonauts. Kryptonauts. If you've been doing research on cryptocurrencies, ICOs, and altcoins, you've probably run into the words proof of work and proof of stake. Well, what is that all about? We're about to break it down for you right now. Proof of work is all about trust, or actually absence of trust. Because of blockchain technology, you don't have to trust anyone. Okay, let's do a quick recap on the blockchain. Your Visa, MasterCard, bank transactions are centralized systems, meaning you must trust one company or entity because they have all of the history of your transactions, your centralized ledger. When a transaction goes through a centralized ledger, it is verified by the central server. Because of double entry systems, if you have $100 in your bank account, you can't send 200. This is because the central server has your transaction history and knows exactly how much you have. With the blockchain, everything is decentralized, meaning you don't have to trust anyone. And everyone has a copy of all transactions, the decentralized ledger. When a transaction goes through a decentralized ledger, it must be verified by the network, also called distributed consensus. However, your transaction lives with all the other transactions happening in real time in something called a block. But all transactions on the block must be verified through something called mining. For a full comprehensive video on blockchain tech, please check out this video right here. Now, we're getting into proof of work, but pay attention because we're headed into tricky territory. Let's dig deep, cadets. A transaction cannot be verified all willy-nilly and right away. It needs to be solved. What does that mean? Imagine each transaction as a cryptographic puzzle piece, and thousands upon thousands of transactional puzzle pieces come together to form a block. This entire block needs to be solved. The process of solving that puzzle, or solving the block, is called mining. If you Google Bitcoin mining, you'll see people with hundreds upon hundreds of computers mining for Bitcoin. They're all trying to solve these blocks using vast computing power. Why do some miners have a ton of computers solving the blocks? Well, because the more computers you have, the faster you can solve the blocks, and it results in money. However, there's a downside. In the process of mining, miners are using tons of resources. First, they're buying expensive hardware called ASICs or application-specific integrated circuits, and then they use electricity that burns off as heat. They can't let the computers overheat, so in some cases fans are installed to cool down the hardware so you end up using even more electricity. It's a vicious cycle. But all of that energy is used to solve the block, and after that block is solved, that block gets added to the public blockchain. But that's not even the craziest part! Some miners have even located their mining operations in Iceland to take advantage of the cheap geothermal energy. So, it's a vicious cycle of resources. But why waste all these resources just to solve the blocks? Well first, it's to validate each transaction. What's the point of having a cryptocurrency if you can't use it as a currency? And second, you get rewarded. When a miner solves the resource intensive task of solving a block, they are handsomely rewarded with coinage. For Bitcoin, as of today, it's 12.5 Bitcoins. And for Ethereum, it's 5 ETH. This is also the process in which new Bitcoins and Ether is created. Right out of thin air. So in today's US dollars, the miners are making $40,000 to $50,000 per block. Imagine all the fidget spinners you could buy. But why even mine at all? Why solve these block puzzles? It's all about security. Just think, more miners equals more security. If you want to find out more about miners and what they do, check out this video right here. So that's proof of work. It involves the process of mining, so that we could validate transactions, the miners get their reward, and another block gets added to the public blockchain. So, what is proof of stake? We got Ethereum getting ready to move to proof of stake on the horizon. What is it? One thing, well, let me explain. In proof of stake, miners are instead called validators. There is a block that needs to be generated, and there are four validators. Each validator deposits their money to the blockchain to get the opportunity to validate or sign a block. Validator 1 has the most money. He takes up 38% of the block. Validator 2 has a 25% stake. Validator 3 has 21%. And Validator 4 has 16%. With mining, the chances you had of solving the block was dependent on the hardware that you have. But in proof of stake, the bigger your stake, the bigger the chance you have of solving the block. So, if you're Validator 1, you have a 38% chance of solving the block. 
After some random calculations, Validator 1, with the largest stake, wins and gets to sign the block. Validator 1 is rewarded not with new coinage, but with transaction fees. So the rich get richer, and why is that? We'll get into that later. So that's proof of stake, it's dependent on how much you're willing to stake to solve the block. Now, is proof of stake better? Well, let's take a look at these four facts. Number one, proof of stake is actually a lot more environmentally friendly than mining. With proof of work, all the hardware that you're using to compute and mine actually burns up a lot of energy. In order to secure a blockchain, it's estimated that both Bitcoin and Ethereum burn over $1 million worth of electricity and hardware costs per day as part of their consensus mechanism. While proof of work requires miners to effectively burn computational power on useless calculations to secure the network, proof of stake effectively stimulates the burning, so no real world energy or resources are ever actually wasted. Number two, with proof of work, new coins can only be generated by solving blocks. And for Bitcoin, the coin supply maxes out at 21 million, which is supposed to happen 100 years from now. While Ethereum doesn't have a supply cap right now, they're planning to partially burn transaction fees to make Ether deflationary so that it becomes more valuable over time. Because with proof of stake, no new coins can be generated or mined. Number three, proof of stake discourages centralized cartels. Right now, Bitcoin has a lot of mining cartel problems, which is causing the hard fork, soft fork crisis. If you go to blockchain.info slash pools, as of today, you will see that the top 10 mining pools control 83.1% of the Bitcoin mining power. And out of the 10 mining pools, eight of them are located in China. That's my people. But there are way too many mining cartels that have too much power. Proof of stake would prevent that. And number four, proof of stake makes a 51% attack virtually impossible. And what is a 51% attack? Here's a quick rundown. Let's say that there are 100 nodes in the network. In a 51% attack, a bad actor must control 51% of the network to implement an attack or hard fork the blockchain so that it benefits him. However, with proof of work mining, this is done by having more raw computing power than 51% of the entire network. That's a very large energy expense. With proof of stake, a validator would have to control at least 51% of all of the digital currency in existence, which would make it very expensive. Ethereum is also planning to implement steep penalties for people who are trying to duplicate blocks. They'll actually destroy your ether in your stake. Here's what Ethereum Jesus, Vitalik Buterin, has to say about a 51% attack. The intention is to make 51% attacks extremely expensive so that even a majority of validators working together cannot roll back finalized blocks without undertaking an extremely large economic loss. A loss so large that a successful attack would likely on net increase the price of the underlying cryptocurrency. Going back to how the rich get richer. The idea is that the validator with a large stake can A, contribute to the security of the cryptocurrency and B, will not endanger his large stake by manipulating the blockchain. By doing so, he will devalue his stake or even lose it altogether. And this all leads back to making proof of stake much more secure and much more stable. So there you have it, the benefits of proof of stake. Now, it's not all rainbows and sunshine and butterflies. Here are just a few problems and possible attacks on the proof of stake system. Nothing at stake problem, initial distribution problems, long range attack, bribe attack, coin age accumulation attack, pre-computing attack. So proof of stake is by no means perfect, but the geniuses over at the Ethereum Foundation are developing a distinct POS system called Casper. That's a whole nother beast because it's a mixture of proof of work and proof of stake and it actually deserves its own video. So I hope we have given you a comprehensive overview of proof of work versus proof of stake. We had to simplify some of the technical terms and stuff like that, but we put it down in the description below and we couldn't do these concepts justice in just three minutes. So forgive us for the length. Um, did you like it? Did you hate it? Please let us know. We're open to suggestions and comments because this channel is for you guys. Speaking of which, our next video will be on IOTA since user Machapoid Audio Land is dying to know more about the new crypto. So we got a lot more videos coming for you guys. So remember, secure your crypto, hodl, and may Vitalik be with you, always.